हे गाइस सो वी आर स्टार्टिंग कैम्ब्रिज इंटरनेशनल ए एस एंड ए लेवल केमिस्ट्री कोर्स बुक एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू कवर सेल्फ असेसमेंट क्वेश्चन ऑफ चैप्टर एट इक्विलिब्रिया क्वेश्चन नंबर वन दिस क्वेश्चन इज गिविंग सम इंफॉर्मेशन इन अ फिगर एट पॉइंट फाइव दिस फिगर इज एक्चुअली अ ग्राफ इन बिटवीन कंसनट्रेशन एंड टाइम कंसनट्रेशन वी आर टेकिंग इन मोल्स पर डी एम क्यू ऑन वाई एक्सेस विद द वैल्यूज टेन रेज टू पावर माइनस थ्री एंड टाइम वी हैव ऑन एक्स एक्सेस एज द रिएक्शन विल प्रोसीड वी एक्चुअली हैव टू लाइन्स ऑन द ग्राफ द लाइन विच इज एट द टॉप इज ऑलवेज द लाइन फॉर द रिएक्टेंट्स एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ द रिएक्शन the reactants will be maximum we have 10 multiplied and raised to power minus 3 concentration for the reactants at the start and after some time as the reaction will proceed the line will start decreasing it means the reactants are consuming and changing into products this line at the end we have for the products and this line will be zero at the start when we have no product at the start of the reaction and as the reaction will proceed this line will start increasing it means the products are going to form here so we can see here in the graph hydrogen iodide is given as the reactant and it is going to decompose and making hydrogen and iodine as the product after some time and in this graph you can also see after some time the line will become straight here for the Uh, for the reactants and products both okay so the line will become straight here for the reactants and here for the products this point where the line is becoming straight the concentration line is becoming constant this is an equilibrium point at equilibrium the concentration of the reactants and the products is always constant because the reaction the rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the reverse or the backward reaction is actually same here so this is all about the graph now we can move toward our question part a why the concentration of iodine and hydrogen at equilibrium is same so if we check out the question graph you can see hydrogen and iodine the question is asking both are products here so we can first of all write and a balanced chemical equation to see the moles of the product and then we can relate them together so if we try to write a balanced chemical equation so we have this equation in which hydrogen iodide two moles of hydrogen iodide will give us one mole of hydrogen and one mole of iodine so hydrogen and iodine moles are same here so it means at equilibrium their concentration will also be same because more number of moles of hydrogen and iodine after decomposition are same part b describe how the depth of the color of the reaction changes as the time progress so you can see in the graph at the start the background color is actually telling you the reaction color at the start here the reaction is colorless after some time it is becoming a little colored and after equilibrium at equilibrium it is now having a little dark color and after equilibrium the color is constant and why we have this whole trend here because at the start we have hydrogen iodide gas and hydrogen iodide is actually a colorless gas so at the start when we have just hydrogen iodide it means it will be having no color it will be colorless after some time when it will start making hydrogen and iodine hydrogen is again colorless but the iodine has purple color so iodine gas will start showing a little color as the formation will continue and after some time when there will be equilibrium the maximum color will achieve till equilibrium after equilibrium now the concentration of iodine is constant it is same it means color will become constant as well and there will be no color change after equilibrium part c explain why there must be 
8.64 10 raised to power minus 3 moles of hydrogen iodide at equilibrium when we have 0 0.68 10 raised to power minus 3 moles of iodine so they are asking about this concentration at equilibrium that's why we have 8.64 for hydrogen iodide if iodine is 0 0.68 so for this question we need to write a balanced chemical equation of hydrogen iodide decomposition so we can relate hydrogen iodide with iodine in this equation so for one mole of iodine formation there are two moles of hydrogen iodide that are decomposed it means if we have 0 0.68 10 raised to power minus 3 of iodine it means how much HI should decompose? It should be two times this 0 0.68 concentration. So we can multiply this 0 0.68 with two. So it will be 1.36 10 raised to power minus three moles of HI must decompose to give us 0 0.68 iodine. Okay, because it have two ratio one mole ratio from the equation. Now, this is the 1.36 are the moles of HI used. What will be the left moles? Left moles will be total moles of HI minus used and we will get the left moles at equilibrium. So total concentration of uh, this HI is given 10 and 1.36 is used. So we will subtract this 10 from this 1.36 8.64 10 raised to power minus 3 mole per dm cube should be the concentration of HI at equilibrium if we have 0 0.68 10 raised to power minus 3 of iodine. Question number 2. A beaker contains saturated aqueous sodium chloride solution and it is in contact with undissolved solid sodium chloride sodium and chloride ions are constantly moving from this solid to solution and back from solution to solid so we have an equilibrium here in between a saturated solution of sodium chloride and undissolved solid sodium chloride and ions are moving from the solution to solid and solid to solution back Part A, explain why this is a closed system. This will be known as closed system because there is no gas here and there will be no loss of matter. If there will be no loss of matter, it means it will be known as a closed system. So we can write there is no loss of matter. So it is a closed system. Second part. Explain why the concentration of saturated sodium chloride solution does not change even the ions are still moving for, from solution to solid. So ions are moving from solution to solid and solid to solution back but concentration will not change because it is an equilibrium reaction and at equilibrium reaction the rate of movement of forward reaction and rate of movement of backward reaction is equal. So we can write rate of movement of sodium and chloride ions from solution to solid will be same as the rate of movement of ions from solid back to solution. So overall concentration will not affect. Part B. Bromine is a reddish brown liquid. It can vaporize at room temperature. It can change into gas state. Some of the liquid bromine is put into a closed jar and we are trying to make an equilibrium here. The color of the bromine vapor above the liquid gets darker. So at the start we have just liquid bromine after some time the liquid where there was no liquid in the air in the jar it is becoming darker now. It means it is vaporizing now it is changing into gas state it will become darker and darker until there will be same color at the end until the color become constant bromine liquid still remains in the jar explain what is happening in terms of changes in concentration of bromine 
So here actually what is happening at the start, the bromine is evaporating and some of the color we can see in the jar. After some time, more bromine will evaporate and color will become dark. And after some time when there will be equilibrium. Equilibrium means some of the bromine is going into vapor state and some of the bromine is coming back from the vapor into liquid state. So their speed of movement from vapor to liquid and liquid to vapor is same right now. That is the reason after some time the color will become constant. So we can write it like this. Initially the bromine molecule will evaporate more as compared to return to the liquid. So the concentration of the bromine will increase in the air in the jar and color will be more darker at the start. At equilibrium the concentration of the bromine will be constant. Bromine vapors and the liquid have the same speed of movement. So this is because the rate of movement of bromine from gas to liquid is same as the rate of the movement from liquid to gas. Question number three. Use this reaction and explain what will happen to the position of equilibrium when more CH3, C00, C2H5 is added. So whenever they ask you about the position of equilibrium, you have to discuss about leach atelier principle. Here right now in this equation, CH3, C00, C2H5 is a product and they are saying what will happen to the position of equilibrium if more product is added. So we have to discuss about the leach atelier principle first. leach atelier principle says that whenever we are going to disturb the equilibrium by adding something, by removing something, or maybe by changing the pressure or temperature, if we are disturbing any reaction, any equilibrium reaction, the reaction will try to minimize the change and go to that direction which will oppose the change. So right now we are increasing the product here. It means we are disturbing the equilibrium. So product is right now more here. Reaction has to move to that side so that the product can again be less. It means reaction will move to reactant side so that the product can be reduced again because we have increased the product here. So according to leach atelier principle, the position of the equilibrium will be left side of the equation that is the reactant side here. And what will happen if we remove some of C2H5OH from here? C2H5OH right now is a reactant here. So if we are removing the reactant, we are reducing the reactant. According to leach atelier principle, reaction will try to move to that side so that it can oppose the change. It can minimize the change, minimize the effect of change. So now we are decreasing the reactant. So reaction will try to make the reactant again so that it can be again increased. So right now, again, the products will change into reactant so that we can again get the same amount of reactant. So reaction will move towards left side towards the reactant side. Part B, use this equation and explain what will happen to the position of equilibrium when concentration of Fe2 positive is increased. Fe2 positive ions are right now in the reactant side. So we are increasing the reactant. So reaction will try to decrease the reactant it means reaction will move towards product side so that the reactants that we are increasing, it can decrease and equilibrium can be achieved again. So reaction should move towards right side here according to leach atelier principle and it will make more CE3 positive and Fe3 positive ions so that it can oppose the change that we are making on the reaction. And what will happen to the same reaction if more water is added here? Water is not the main reactant or product here. 
water is actually having with all the have effect on all the reactants and products because right now all the reactants and products are aqueous they are mixed in water so if we are going to add the water water will have equal or same effect of on effect on all the reactant and product it means overall the position of equilibrium will have no effect because of water so we can say there will be no effect on the position of equilibrium if we add water why because water is going to dilute all the ions equally so there will be no change in the ratio of reactant and product Question number four, predict the effect of increasing the pressure on the following reaction. Again, we have to tell by the help of leach atelier principle. In the first equation, we have N2O4, it is one mole right now. And we have NO2 as the product, it is two moles right now. So product have more moles and reactant have less moles, one mole. Increase in pressure. What happens when we actually increase the pressure? When we increase the pressure, the molecules of the gas come closer to each other and their volume will decrease now. Okay, so it means the reaction will try to move to that direction where we have less moles or less volume. Okay, so right now for the first one, we have less moles on the reactant side. So when we are increasing the pressure to oppose this change, the reaction will try to move to reactant side where we have less moles. It means the reaction will have left side. It will move to the left side and equilibrium will shift where we have few gas molecules. And remember one more thing here. Whenever we talk about increasing or decreasing the pressure, pressure will affect only on the gases. The liquid and solid will have very negligible effect and we don't study about them. We study about the effect of pressure on gases only. So in the first equation, we have just two gases on both sides. So the reaction will move to that side where we have less moles of the gas. So it will move toward the reactant or the left side of the equilibrium. Second equation, in the second equation, we have solid on the reactant side and we have solid and one gas on the product side. And if we check about the moles as well, we have more moles on the product side and less mole on the reactant side because uh, we have two, one CaO here, one carbon dioxide here. So we have more moles on the product side. But as we said already, in case of increasing and decreasing the pressure, we will check just the gases. Okay, so gas we have on the product side, but there is no gas on the reactant side. So increase in pressure will move to that side where there is less moles. So there is no moles on the reactant side or you can say less. So it means the reaction will move backward or it will move to the left side. So in a reaction involving gases and solid and liquids, it will be only the gas molecules which are going to have effect because of the pressure. So for the second reaction, because there is no gas on the right uh, on the left side, so it will move to the left side, but not on the right side. Part B, predict the effect of decreasing the pressure on the following reaction. Now decrease in pressure means the molecules will move a little away from each other. It will increase in volume. Decreasing pressure means the volume will increase. So it means it will prefer to that side of the reaction where there is more volume, where there is more moles. So we have two moles on the reactant side and we have two plus one, three moles on the product side. So it means equilibrium will shift towards the right side towards the product side where we have total three moles. So we can say equilibrium is shifting to the right side as there are greater number of gas molecules on the right side. Question number five, predict the effect of increasing the temperature on the following reaction. 
they have also given you the enthalpy change delta h r value which is right now positive positive value means it is endothermic reaction and whenever we talk about the increase or decrease in temperature we have to check that the reaction is endothermic or exothermic because according to lee chatelier principle the endothermic and exothermic will behave differently when we change the temperature okay so endothermic means it needs temperature okay endothermic means it needs temperature so when we are increasing the temperature of the reaction it means it will favor the endothermic reaction because endothermic reaction needs this temperature so right now we have this endothermic reaction so if we increase the temperature it should have forward direction it will move towards the product because right now the forward reaction is endothermic reaction so how we can explain it that increase in temperature is going to increase the energy of the surrounding and lee chatelier principle says that the direction of the reaction will be to that side where there will be more increase in energy okay so reaction will go to the direction in which energy is going to absorb right now so that is endothermic reaction so right now endothermic reaction will be favored and it will move the reaction to the forward side so direction of the reaction will be towards right side so just remember when we have endothermic reaction increase in temperature will move it to forward side and decrease in temperature will move it to reverse side part b now we have one more equation and increasing the temperature increasing the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is product here if we are increasing the temperature it is increasing the carbon dioxide and pressure is constant means there is no role of pressure right now here we have to just check the increase in temperature and we have to tell is this reaction exothermic or endothermic so see we are increasing the temperature and we said that increase in temperature if it is going towards the forward side towards the product side it means it is absorbing energy it means it should be endothermic reaction so this following reaction is actually endothermic reaction because increase in temperature is moving the reaction to the forward side it is absorbing this temperature it is not opposing this temperature so it means it will be endothermic reaction here so we can write it will be endothermic because forward reaction is favored why forward is favored because there is more carbon dioxide here which is the forward reaction question number 6 write equilibrium expressions for the following reaction and state the unit of kc so we have to write equilibrium expression kc and then we have to tell the unit as well so how we can write the kc actually so kc is the equilibrium constant for concentration and it is equal to concentration of the products divided by concentration of all the reactants so right now we have in the first equation product ch3oh so for the concentration we use the square brackets so we are going to write ch3oh into square bracket we have just one product so we will close the bracket divided by all the reactants we have co here as the reactant in one bracket and then multiply by other bracket in which we are going to write hydrogen and remember the starting number written here is the number of moles two moles of hydrogen we have so this number of moles actually become power when we write kc expression so it will be power 2 of h2 concentration so that will be the kc expression and if we want to write the unit for this it will be equal to every bracket here is actually equal to mole per dm cube unit so at the top we will be having mole per dm cube here and then co is again one so we will be having mole per dm cube for co multiply by 
hydrogen are actually two here two times here it has the power two here so we have to write the unit of mole per dm cube two times for hydrogen so it will be mole per dm cube one time multiply by mole per dm cube two times okay now we can cancel the same units so mole per dm cube and mole per dm cube one will get cancelled and these two we will just combine together so it will be one divided by mole square with dm minus six we will add their powers together two moles we have and dm minus three and minus three will be dm minus six then it will go on upside and the power sign will change so it will become mole minus two and dm will become positive dm six so that will be the unit for this same way we can write for the second equation for the second equation we have the kc and we have to write first of all the product we have water two moles two will become power here so h2o in the square bracket with two as a power and then we are going to write the second product cl2 with two moles as a power divided by we are going to write hcl reactant with four moles as a power because we have four hcl here in the second equation and we have one oxygen so o2 here so that is equilibrium expression and for the units we have to write all the units we will be writing water unit two times then cl2 mole per dm cube unit two times then we are going to write hcl four times and then for the oxygen we are going to write unit one time so when we are writing the units some units are going to get cancelled so this two time unit for this and for this will get cancelled with the unit of hcl four times okay it will get cancelled when we are writing the units so left unit will be just for oxygen it will be one divided by mole per dm cube for oxygen so this mole per dm cube will come up and it will be equal to mole minus one dm three that will be the unit so here is the final answer that you can see the kc expressions and their units Question number seven, calculate the value of Kc for the following reaction using the information given below. You have this equation given. You have initial concentration of hydrogen and carbon dioxide given. They are also same because we have the one one mole of both. So their concentrations are same here. And they have equilibrium concentration of CO is given 9.47, okay? and water equilibrium concentration is not given and nothing no information about the water is given okay so for the value of the kc first of all we have to write the kc expression so kc expression for this one will be equal to product water concentration divided by co with co concentration these two are the products divided by hydrogen reactant concentration with co2 concentration all are one one mole so it means there will be no power here now remember one more thing when we are writing this kc expression this is equilibrium expression it means we need equilibrium concentration for h2o for co for h2 for co2 all the reactant and product equilibrium concentration we need not the initial so these initial concentrations we cannot use but this equilibrium we can use. By using this information, we have to find equilibrium concentration for all reactant and product. Only then we can use this KC expression. Okay, so for this one, we can write the equation and write first of all initial concentrations given. Initial concentration of hydrogen is given 10 and initial concentration of carbon dioxide is given 10 at initial we have no product it means the concentration of the products will be zero zero then for finding the equilibrium concentration equilibrium concentration of co is given 9.47 co and bo water both products are one one mole it means 
the water will also have the same equilibrium concentration 9.47 and for finding the reactant concentration we can subtract the product equilibrium concentration from starting value of the reactant 10 minus 9.47 for both reactants so 0 0.53 0 0.53 will be the value of equilibrium concentration for the reactants now we can use our kc expression and in the kc expression we can put all the values and you will be getting the answer 319 and you will also check out the unit we will be having two mole per dm cubes upside and two in the below so they will just get cancelled and at the end there will be no unit question number eight nitrogen and hydrogen react together to form ammonia we have this equilibrium and balanced equation 0 0.1 moles of nitrogen and 0 0.1 moles of hydrogen were mixed in a closed container with a volume of 1 dm cube at equilibrium n mole of ammonia is formed what is the concentration of hydrogen at equilibrium so we have four options given for this we have to first of all solve it only then we can find it so start writing with the moles that are given to you if we check out the equation and we compare the ammonia and hydrogen together we have three moles of hydrogen and it is producing two moles of ammonia so we can start writing when we have two moles of ammonia it means how much hydrogens are required there are three moles of hydrogen required why we are relating the ammonia and hydrogen together because it is asking you hydrogen concentration hydrogen is a reactant and we have to relate it with product only then we can find the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen so we are saying that two moles of ammonia according to equation is needing how much hydrogen three moles if we have one mole of ammonia then how much it will need just divide this two on other side it will be three divided by two moles that is 1.5 moles of hydrogen will be needed when we have one mole of ammonia now it is saying in the question that n mole of ammonia was there in the equilibrium so if we have n moles of ammonia then how much hydrogen will be needed just multiply this 1.5 with n so 1.5 times n moles will be needed for hydrogen at equilibrium so now what will be the remaining moles of hydrogen at equilibrium that is the moles of hydrogen at the start that is 0 0.1 minus the moles of hydrogen at equilibrium will give you the moles of hydrogen remaining after equilibrium okay so moles of hydrogen at the start minus moles of hydrogen used will be equal to 0 0.1 minus 1.5 n so these are the moles at equilibrium for hydrogen now we have the moles we can easily find the concentration so concentration have a formula equal to moles divided by volume in dm cube so moles of the hydrogen at equilibrium are 0 0.1 minus 1.5 n divided by one mole per dm cube volume is given so it will give you the answer 0 0.1 minus 1.5 n so this will be the concentration of hydrogen at equilibrium so option c will be the right answer here. question number nine deduce the effect of increase in temperature on the value of kc for the following reaction so 2no2 plus o2 is giving us 2no in an equilibrium reaction and delta hr is negative negative means it is exothermic reaction right now so we are increasing the temperature of exothermic reaction so according to the lee chatelier principle when we increase the temperature of exothermic reaction the reaction will move to the backward side it will move towards the reactant side so reaction will move towards reactant side so now if we just try to write the kc expression roughly kc is actually equal to concentration of all the products divided by concentration of all the reactants 
we need this kc expression so that we can tell what will be happen to the value of kc so now the reaction is going backward backward means there are more reactants and there will be less product now so it means there will be less concentration of the product there will be some less amount here and there will be more amount of product more amount of reactants less amount of the uh, products and there will be more amount of reactants less value divided by more value will give you overall small answer okay it means the kc value is going to decrease if we have exothermic reaction and we increase the temperature so same we can write that concentration of products over concentration of reactant is our kc when we have less product over more reactant overall kc value will decrease because right now we have an exothermic reaction and we are increasing temperature in exothermic reaction means we are favoring the backward reaction towards left side part b explain why increasing the concentration of oxygen does not affect the value of kc if we just increase one concentration oxygen here it will not affect the kc value so we have to explain it remember if we just change the concentration in the equation everything else is constant pressure is constant moles are constant and we are changing just the concentration it will not affect the value of kc why we have a reason that we will check with the help of example so first of all note down that if all other conditions remain constant the kc value will not change if we change the concentration of maybe any reactant any product kc value will not affect okay now in this equation we are increasing the concentration of oxygen so if we write the kc expression for this kc will be equal to concentration of all the products divided by concentration of all the reactants so we have no as the product with two moles become power no2 as the reactant with two moles will become power here and oxygen as other reactant so that is our kc expression right now so when we are adding more oxygen it means according to leach atelier principle increasing the concentration will shift this equilibrium towards right side towards the product side so that it can minimize the effect of change so when it is moving towards the right side it means more products will be there as compared to reactants so we can write in the expression we will be having more products as compared to reactants reactants will be less so kc will increase for some time but this is just for a short time when this ratio will disturb the reaction will try to restore the equilibrium it will try to change the kc again to the original value how because the reactants are right now less product is more here so equilibrium will try to increase the reactants no2 and o2 and decrease the product no as much until the kc return to original value so it equilibrium will restore in short uh, short moment of time because when all other conditions are same only the concentration change will not change the kc value because equilibrium can restore again according to leach atelier principle question number 10 reaction below was carried out up at a pressure of 10 multiplied by 10 raised to power 4 pascal at a constant pressure temperature n2 plus o2 is giving us 2 no the partial pressure of nitrogen and oxygen both is same and it is 4.85 10 raised to power 4 calculate the partial pressure of no nitrogen 2 oxide at equilibrium so 10 multiply by 10 raised to power 4 pascal is given as the total pressure here and 4.85 is given as the partial pressure of nitrogen and oxygen and we don't have the no pressure here that we have to calculate 
So we have a formula that partial pressure of individual gases is equal to total pressure of the system. So we can write this formula here that the total pressure of the gases will be equal to sum of partial pressure of all the individual gases. So total pressure will be equal to, we have three gases here, N2, O2 and NO. So total pressure will be equal to P total, P is representing pressure here. P total will be equal to partial pressure of nitrogen plus partial pressure of oxygen plus partial pressure of NO. So we have P total here, 10, multiply 10 raised to power 4. We have P nitrogen and oxygen having the same value 4.85 10 raised to power 4 that we can put here plus partial pressure of NO that we have to find. So these two values will go on other side and subtract from 10 and at the end we will be getting PNO 3 multiplied by 10 raised to power 3 Pascal. It is the partial pressure of nitrogen 2 oxide. Question number 11. Deduce the unit of Kp for the following reactions. We have A reaction PCl5 gas is changing into PCl3 gas plus Cl2 gas. So we have to write the Kp expression for this. Just like the Kc, we can write the Kp expression. So for writing the Kp expression, first of all, we have to write the partial pressure of all the products divided by the partial pressure of all the reactants here. And then we can find the unit as well. Okay. So for writing the partial pressure, we have to first of all write a small p here. And the product we can write here PCL3 like this. Multiply by second p for the second product. We are not writing square brackets here. In case of the Kc, we actually write square brackets and all the products inside the square brackets. Here actually we write P and at the end of this one, at the downside, we write PCL3 here. And same, we can write one more P and we can write chlorine here, the other product. Okay. Divided by all the reactants. Reactant, we have PCL5 here. So we are going to write P here and PCL5 will become subscript here for the P, okay? Now we can also write the unit. Every term here have the unit Pascal and we represent the Pascal with PA. So PCL3 will have a unit Pascal multiplied by PCL2 is also one mole here. So it will also have the unit Pascal divided by PCL5 again, one mole having the unit. Pascal. So same units can get cancelled here. So this Pascal and Pascal will get cancelled and final unit we will get just Pascal for this Kp expression, expression number one. Okay. Then we can also write in the same way expression for the second Kp for the ammonia equation. We have N2 plus 3H2 giving us 2NH3. So Kp will be equal to P. NH3 product will become subscript here and two moles will become power or superscript here. We will be writing two as the power of this P. Okay, this P is representing the partial pressures. Then we have two reactants. So first of all, P for the reactant of nitrogen and there is no moles, uh, one mole only, so there will be no power. And for the hydrogen, we have PH2 and three will become power. We have three moles of hydrogen here. Then for writing the unit, we have NH3, two moles, so we will write the Pascal two times. We have N2, just one mole, so we will write the Pascal one time here. And for hydrogen, we will write the Pascal three time here because it has three power. So two Pascal will get cancelled up and down and we will be left with two only. So it will be one divided by PA square. So this will go on upside and become negative PA minus two. That will be the unit for second equation. Then for the third equation, we can also write the Kp expression. But for the third equation, you have to note down a point. In the third equation, we have the solids as well. One reactant is the solid and one reactant, one product is the solid here. So remember, 
whenever we write the kp expression we write just for the gases we are not going to write for any liquid or any solid because partial pressure is going to affect just on the gases so we write kp expression just for the gases so we are not going to include fe and fe3o4 in the kp expression so how we can write we have to write the kp expression for h2 4h2 and 4h2o only so kp will be equal to p h2 with power 4 divided by p h2o with power 4 because both are 4 for moles right now and this will be the kp expression now we can write the unit as well hydrogens are 4 mole so we have to write pascal 4 times also water are 4 mole so we will be writing pascal as 4 times so all the pascal will get can cancel up and down so it means at the end there will be no unit Question number 12, the information below gives the data for the reaction of hydrogen with iodine. Hydrogen and iodine are reacting together and producing HI here. So initially, some partial pressure values are given to you and hydrogen iodide is zero at the start. And at equilibrium, the values are given and this value of iodine at equilibrium is missing. So you have to find the partial pressure of iodine at equilibrium. So before finding this value, just remember that whatever is the total pressure at the start, the same will be the total pressure at equilibrium. Total pressure is not going to change. So if we are going to add all the initial pressures here, these three values together, it should be equal to total pressure of all these terms at equilibrium. So that's how by using this relation, we can easily find partial pressure of iodine at equilibrium. So how we can write? We can say that total pressure at the start is equal to total pressure at equilibrium. So at the start, we have this 7.27 and 4.220, and these values that we can add. It will be equal to these two values, 3.41 plus 7.72 plus partial pressure of iodine, which is missing here. So these two values will go on other side and subtract. After solving, you will get the answer for partial pressure of iodine. Part B, calculate the value of Kp for this reaction and also tell about the units. So by using the equation easily, you can write the Kp expression. It will be pressure of PHI product having two moles divided by PH2 reactant one mole multiply by pi2 one mole and then now you have to put the values and you have to find the value of this kp so you can use the partial pressure of hi here which one equilibrium one remember these kp and kc expressions are taken at equilibrium so we have to use the equilibrium values only so hydrogen iodide at equilibrium is 7.7 to 10 raised to power 6. We will put here with the square on it because we have square in the expression. Then the P hydrogen at equilibrium is 3.41 10 raised to power 6 plus the P iodine at equilibrium we just calculated in previous part is 0 0.36 10 raised to power 6. Put all the values and you will get the answer 48.5. Then you have to tell about the unit as well. You can use this term and uh, KP expression and find the unit. We have HI two times. So we will be writing Pascal two times here. Divided by, we have hydrogen one time, one mole, Pascal one time, with PI two, Pascal one time. So two Pascal and two Pascal will get canceled and there will be no unit at the end. Question number 13, when metallic mercury is shaken with the solution of mercury 2 nitrate, a solution of mercury 1 nitrate is formed. We have this balanced chemical equation here and we have four different uh, options, which one can be correct equilibrium expression. So we have to see all these equilibrium expressions one by one. Okay. 
starting from the last one d see here it is giving you the partial pressure of hg2 product divided by partial pressure of hg2 positive so in the in the equation if you see hg2 positive is aqueous and this hg2 positive and this hg also it is aqueous and liquid we have no gas here so kp expression we cannot write for any liquid or aqueous we can write just for the gases so option d is not possible here okay okay then we have the c option in the c option we are taking the product over reactant concentration and for the product it is taking hg2 to positive with the square here square means maybe two moles of hg2 are here so there are no two moles there is just one mole here it means the c option is also not possible it is giving us a wrong power here so no need to check the complete just this power will is going to make the expression wrong here okay now a and b options as we said already when we are talking about the concentration expressions we are not going to take the liquid or solid in the expression why because its concentration will remain constant throughout this is one reason the second reason is when we have pure elemental states or when we have pure compounds we don't take their concentration in the expression because the pure concentrate pure elements or the compounds concentration are not going to change right now hgl is the elemental mercury okay it is in its original state right now it is pure here so its concentration is not going to change it means in the kc expression we cannot write hgl here so we have to write just hg2 positive hg2 to positive as a product and hg2 positive as a reactant we cannot write hgl in the expression why because this is pure elemental state and pure elemental state concentration is go not going to change in the expression so b will not be option uh, not possible option a will be the right option here so reason you can write with you that solids and liquids that appear in the balanced equation are not included in equilibrium expression and the reason is because concentration remains constant and also the composition of the pure form is not going to change so a will be our right answer here question 14 Hepper process for the synthesis of ammonia may operate at temperature 450 degree celsius and pressure 1.5 ten raised to power 7 pascal using iron as a catalyst equation is given and delta h r value is given means this expression right now is exothermic expression so it is asking in part a suggest why a temperature of more than 450 is not used for this reaction and it will not make the reaction feasible here so we have to explain why more than 450 temperature is not good here so see this reaction right now is exothermic reaction and if we increase the temperature in case of exothermic reaction leach atelier principle says that the equation will move towards the backward side so forward reaction will not be possible here we need the forward reaction so it means we cannot change the temperature we cannot increase the 450 temperature here because reaction is exothermic so reaction is exothermic backward reaction is favored when we increase the temperature position of the equilibrium will be away from the ammonia if we increase the temperature here so we have to make it fix at 450 degree celsius part b suggest why the reaction is carried out at high pressure rather than normal atmospheric pressure so see if we check out the equation high pressure or increased pressure will move the reaction to that side where we have less moles so right now we have less moles two moles on the product side and we have total four moles on the reactant side so it means increasing the pressure will shift the equation 
towards the less moles means the product side so that is the reason overall we are taken uh, taking this reaction at high pressure not at normal pressure because high pressure is going to favor the forward reaction so what we can say with increase in pressure reaction is going towards the direction with few moles and few moles we have in the forward reaction in the product side part c explain why the removal of ammonia as soon as it is formed is an important part of this industrial process so why we have to remove ammonia because this is a reversible reaction and if we are not going to remove the ammonia the ammonia can also go back to the reactants so to removal of ammonia is very important here if we want ammonia as a product so we have to remove it as soon as it is going to form part g when the ammonia has been removed why does not it decompose back to nitrogen and hydrogen when we just remove it then why it is not going back because when we are removing the ammonia we are going to condense it we are going to take it its condensation at very low temperature it means there will be no chances for the ammonia to go back into hydrogen and nitrogen gases and also there is no catalyst present in the container so there is no chance for the ammonia to go back to the reactants question number 15 write an equation to show potassium hydroxide dissolving in water so we have to write the expression of the potassium hydroxide dissolving in water potassium hydroxide is koh when we are going to dissolve in water we can also write aqueous with it and we have to write its balanced equation and in the part b we have to write an equation for liquid nitric acid dissolving in water nitric acid is hno3 liquid and we can dissolve it with aqueous water and we have to write the balanced chemical equations so potassium hydroxide koh it is solid it will mix with water aq aqueous and dissolve into ions so k positive and oh negative ions it is going to make and we have liquid nitric acid hno3 liquid it will dissolve in water and make its ions no3 negative ions and h positive ions after that part c write ionic equations for the reaction in aqueous solution between sodium hydroxide and nitric acid first of all and then we have to write the equation between potassium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid and all are aqueous here okay so for writing the ionic equation first of all we have to write a balanced equation with the all states written and then we have to make the ionic equation so we will start from the first one sodium hydroxide and nitric acid sodium hydroxide is nuh nitric acid is hno3 so nuh aqueous plus hno3 aqueous is giving us any no3 aqueous plus water in the liquid state that is the balanced chemical equation right now now to write the ionic equation we have to dissolve all the aqueous states into ions okay so nuh aqueous will make two ions na positive and oh negative HNO3 will make two ions H positive and NO3 negative and on the product side NaNO3 will make two ions Na positive and NO3 negative and the water is liquid it will not make it make the ions so we are not going to write its ions here we will be writing ions only for the aqueous state now cancel out the same ions on the reactant and the product side so Na positive will get cancel NO3 negative will get cancelled so remaining ions and remaining thing you have to write OH negative H positive aqueous and H2O liquid will be remaining now this remaining is actually ionic equation so this is the ionic equation for sodium hydroxide and nitric acid and remember one thing the ions that we are going to cancel here which are actually equal on both reactant and product side or in other words you can say they are not participating in the reaction because they are going to cancel on both side these ions are actually known as spectator ions so spectator ions will get cancel from the equation 
and remaining ions and the remaining equation will be known as ionic equation. Same way we can write equation for the potassium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. Potassium hydroxide is KOH aqueous, hydrochloric acid is HCl aqueous, is producing KCl aqueous and water liquid. So HCl will make two ions H positive Cl negative, KOH will make ions K positive H negative. KCl will make ions because it is aqueous K positive and Cl negative and water liquid will not change into ions, it, it will remain H2O. Now cancel out the same ions on both sides of reactant and product. Cl will get cancelled with Cl, K positive, K positive, remaining will be H positive aqueous, OH negative aqueous and it is giving H2O liquid. So that will be the final ionic equation for potassium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid.